year, there is an army of new gadgets trying to capture attention with, well, varying degrees of success. But every so often we see something with a truly undeniable cool factor and devices with foldable screens, which appear to be just around the bend, might just be the next example for this. But what sort of new school science fiction makes foldable screens possible? I mean, from the time we were all watching heavy tube TVs with rabbit ear antennas to now streaming on Netflix, on our iPhones, we've always used rigid displays. Well, it turns out that the simple form of foldable display tech was actually invented all the way back in 1974 when disk of all the things was first catching on. That year, a Xerox employee developed Zircon, which was actually an early form of electronic paper, similar to what you'd find today in an e-reader like Amazon Kindle. Now, because it worked on suspending ink containing particles in fluid, it didn't need a rigid display or a backlight. Instead, the display just applied a voltage to each particle to get it to show either white or black, depending on what text was to be displayed. Of course, these days, flexible displays with low resolution of an e-ink device aren't what most people are interested in. Rather, the foldable tech we are all expecting to see in smartphones in the near future is going to be based on OLEDs. But the most important thing to know is that their chemical makeup allows them to produce their own light, meaning that they don't need a bulky backlight behind the color layer. This has made it possible for companies like LG to build shockingly thin TVs. But how do we go from a thin but still rigid screen to a screen that, you know, can fold or even roll up? Well, as it turns out, OLEDs themselves are only about one-tenth of a millimeter thick. That is a thousand times thinner than your average sheet of paper. So, while most current smartphones and TVs attach OLEDs to a piece of glass, which is obviously thicker and less foldable than paper, foldable displays instead use layer of bendable plastic to support OLEDs. So, then that's it. You just swap glass with plastic and you've got yourself a foldable. I'm kidding. So, of course, it's not that simple. I mean, think about it. If you were to fold a piece of paper over and over again along the same crease, it will weaken and eventually break. And this is paper. It's designed to be folded. This is not the kind of behavior you want from an expensive smartphone. So, not just any thin piece of plastic is going to do the trick. Samsung appears to be using special glass plastic hybrid layer to give its foldable a little more resilience and strength. This is really cool. It's supposed to be stronger than Gorilla Glass but only about 50 microns thick, making it easy to fold. Another challenge though has been to incorporate electronics other than actual OLEDs. Now it might not be difficult to picture a rollable circuit board. I mean you can buy a rollable keyboard for 50 bucks on eBay. But manufacturing a touch screen that can be folded is more novel problem as the layer that responds to touch on traditional smartphone and tablets is rigid, meaning that manufacturers might have to turn to more exotic nanomaterials. All of this though is really cool, but kind of raises the question, what even is the point of going to all this trouble just for a foldable screen? I mean, aren't our typical Hershey bar shaped phones serving us just fine without another gimmick? Well, one huge potential advantage for foldable displays is that they'll be a lot harder to break either from accidental drops or even just leaving them in your back pocket. And the Android team is already working on developer options that could allow apps to take full advantage of foldable screens and change layouts or add functionality on the fly as the user folds and unfolds the display so it could result in more flexibility. But it'll probably be a while before the software fully realizes the potential of foldable smartphones. And you might be in the wait if you want a foldable gadget that you can actually afford. Although the plastics that allow them to bend ultimately allow them to bend ultimately prove cheaper for the phone companies than glass they are using today, manufacturing challenges and ever-present early adopters tax means that you will probably have to fork over a lot of cash. If you really want one at the beginning. If you're short of money though, don't worry guys. There's plenty of cheap conversation pieces that you can talk about. One of them is this channel which you can talk about if you hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe.